Hello everybody. So I am working on some River Cane arrows. Off work today because I've got a dentist appointment. But um, I wanted to show you the process here that I'm, I'm getting ready to do, which is just weighing and kind of sorting my shafts. Um, so I've straightened these up. These are some uh, River Cane arrows that I cut and straightened last night. And uh, you can see I've got the um, the knock ends pretty much ready to go. And uh, here yeah so I've got the knock-ins kind of ready to carve some some knocks in there but the first thing to do is weigh them I'm just using a kitchen scale uh, it works well enough for me you know so let's see uh, what we can do they should all be within a certain range of each other and if you know, there's, I have plenty of river canes, so I can afford to sort of match these the way I want to. So this one is 0.75. Okay. This one is 0.75. <laughs> this one feels a little lighter. Nope, 0.75. This one feels... I'm not even going to guess now. 0.65. Oh, 0.55. And this one? This feels a little heavier. Yep, 0.8. All right. So, uh, as far as spine, spine goes, it's about the same. I'll go ahead and group it in there with these. So this will round out this set of six. I don't usually get that particular about my shafts. When it comes to carving knocks, uh, a lot of the times I'll just use regular old uh, files. This is a five thirty seconds, I think, chainsaw file, and this is just a uh, little needle file that comes in one of those cheap sets at Lowe's. But traditionally, a couple of people have asked about traditional carving and uh, knocks and uh, how that's done the best way that I can tell you um, or the way that I am familiar with and occasionally will do I apologize if the audio on this video isn't great I'm not using any microphones it's just the camera audio so it's probably gonna be a little fuzzy you can see uh, there's this node here we've cut our knocks on a node and that gives it good strength you know and gives us a slight sort of bulb and dip that we use um, that helps in that pinch release. Now as far as carving in the knocks goes, a lot of people will take their files and they'll just start straight here at the end and they'll work down through the wood. That's a great way of doing it. Uh, but another way, and the more traditional way that I know of, I'm going to use a triangle file here in place of a drill, a stone drill, or um, you know metal drills and things like that. But taking, you put it here just at the top of that um, and you start to drill. All right, so as you start to drill, just wear down, and I'm doing this all with, you know, just my hands, so if you had a more efficient drill, of course it's going to be better. But you drill down into the wood or into the cane, and once you've drilled enough, you take this. This is a muskrat tooth. Um but squirrel teeth also work well. Uh, I like the muskrats because um, they just I just find that they kind of fit better in my hand. You can attach these to a, a handle or a tool, you know, um, but I kind of like using them just here, um, just in my hand. They, they just really kind of fit well. So you take your muskrat jawbone here and you use this in that hole to split out as a gouge and carve the knock into your arrow. And you just repeat that process until you've got a finished knock. So you do it from one side and then you flip it over and you drill on the other side and you do the same thing. And it's a little bit easier on the other side as well to drill because you're drilling on top of that node. Um, so I'll drill down into this side a little bit and show you how it's a little bit easier. 
Now cane works great with this because of course it's kind of fibrous. Cedar and other conifer shafts work well with this. Anything that splits well. Because really what you're doing is you're splitting the material. You're using this uh, tooth as a wedge. So you can see here, got a nice little pile of shavings. And now, I take my tooth, you get it in there, and you split up. So, that's how you start your knocks, and that's how you um, work through the sides. So you work in from the sides, not down from the top. This is also a good way to carve um, knocks for, or notches for uh, points. So apart from simply carving the shape in and then breaking it away, you can also drill in from the sides, split the excess out of those with two channels that meet in the middle, um, and then finish it off by grinding away on the inside. Usually, I like to do it with the base of the point that I'm going to be hafting. So, there you go. Hope you enjoy and make some arrows.